<laughs> okay, Steph, so you're muted at the moment. I, I think we're ready to go. We're okay. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, first of all, to open the meeting, give a very warm welcome to our latest committee members. We have Mayor Leonard and, and Councillor Jurgensen joining us today. So very, very happy to have you aboard. Thank you. Happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so Steph, are we gonna go into the approval of the agenda or do you want to add the election right away? Um, well, I think we'll put the election at the end. Okay. And so that's the late item is the election and the introductions, which we did unless, yeah. Okay, so we'll move into um, item number one, approval of the agenda. As amended. Um, that the Community Economic Development Committee approve the agenda for this, for the February 15th, 2023 meeting. So um, I think we, I just have to ask for I'm never sure of so my, my <laughs> protocol is awful. You could do a mover and a seconder. A mover. So, Who's moving it? Jody. Jody's moving it. I'll yes. second it. <laughs> all in favor. Uh, all opposed. I don't have pictures for everybody, so. Um, I'm um, going to ask you to speak up if you if you do wish to oppose. Okay. Okay. Adopted. Uh, adoption of the minutes of the December 13th Community Economic Development Committee meeting. Um, does anybody have any comments on the minutes? No. Okay. I've reviewed them and I move to adopt them. Do I have a seconder? Jody. Jody, thank you. All in favor? All opposed? Okay. Okay, adopted. Jody, you're on mute. I think you're trying to say something. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I I thought I saw something about Allison wasn't at the last meeting, but she was on. Sorry. Oh, okay. Never no, mind. Okay. Thank. No, that's fine. Thank you. I've made that correction. Okay. At my, at my end. Thank you so much. Okay. So it was in my head, I guess. Okay, so the next item is what we, we have a public uh, delegation and we are gonna have a conversation with Claudia Schaefer, Schaefer mm -hmm. um, regarding the, the Bowen book. So we mm -hmm. talked a little, a little bit about that in our last meeting and we were talking about, I think this is gonna be in the context of, uh, we did have some interest in creating some sort of more of a, uh, an island-wide digital presence. So, uh, you know, um, Claudia's book is part of that piece. And um, uh, Claudia, I invite you to go ahead. Okay, thank you. Thank you for having me tonight. Um, just a show of hands who I can see. Has anyone been on uh, bowenbook.ca, the local resource guide for... Islanders. Okay, great. Well, I'm going to just uh, give a little tour through it. So I'm going to start uh, sharing my screen. Uh, here we go. So can everyone see that? Yep. Okay. And are you also seeing um, all the Zoom uh, photos of the attendants here? Yeah. Uh, hmm, no, we're just seeing the. Just oh, okay. Yeah. okay, okay, great. So um, here it is. Um, it is the. It's sort of a companion website to the Bowen phone book, which, uh, as you know, has more than just phone numbers. So it has, um, you know, sometimes feature articles or resources, um, and it, it seemed time to really. Uh, make uh, a, a digital presence uh, for the, uh, the phone book, um, but it also has other things that the phone book can't have. 
Um, and um, if you can see down here, we've got a business directory, Bowen events, Bowen classifieds, and local resources. So um, I'll just start. Uh, well, that so then this is the home page. Um, it um, highlights a few of the um, businesses in the directory. Um, Bowen Island upcoming events. So these are all uh, February events and you can go in and see past events. Um, it's a really cute logo that uh, Ron Woodall did for me for the book. Um, and then there's the business directory. Uh, let's see. So um, it's all uh, photos by locals. Um, so here you've got all your different um, categories, um, but then within, let's say, building needs, there's blasting, drainage, generators, um, there's all kinds of um, categories. So if you're looking for anything, you know, a chiropractor or kinesiologist, um, they'll be listed in there. And the search uh, option is pretty good. So if you put in, um, you know, what you're looking for or a business name, um, it, it will come up with that. Um, let me just go in somewhere. So let's go to um, Local Eats, which has bakery, cafes, catering, uh, restaurants is one of them. And then um, what comes up is um, a map showing locations and um, <clears throat> and then um, some of the businesses that are highlighted. Um, and if you click on a business, uh, you'll see that they have their own page. So each business um, has its own page and they can have a long description or um, more photos. There's all kinds of options. But So that's the business uh, directory. The classifieds, I won't even bother showing you. Uh, you know, I haven't been promoting the classifieds much and there's really, um, I also had a free option for classifieds, which was meant to be uh, for giveaways or lost and found items. But what I'm getting is um, businesses choosing classified, but ticking the free box. So, so that ha has that there's a bit of a glitch in the system there because that they're, um, they're posting uh, business ads for free, and sometimes it's spam and whatever. So, uh, I might take the classifieds down actually, but I'm not sure. We'll see. And then we have uh, events and. Um, this is free for anyone to post a Bowen Island event. Um, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm encouraging people, especially ones, you know, like Sherry Ulrich or Lynn um, uh, Hartle, who often post on Facebook, to also post here because it's a, um, it's a platform, it's meant to be a community events board that is not reliant on being on social media. Um, there's plenty of people who don't wanna be on Facebook. Um, uh, there's older people, you know, if there's somewhere that they can go and see everything in one place. Also the problem with Facebook, you know, once you post an event, might go down the feed and, you know, a lot of people don't see it. So um, this is a place where, um, events can be posted, they stay up until they've occurred, then they go into um, recent or past events. Um, and, you know, I'm trying to uh, also build um, like some fun stuff around that. So like a uh, dark dance or Canada day or, or what have you, that there could be a gallery. Um, and I have done that with um, some events, Bowfest. So there's a gallery of photos um, that can be added to all the time by uh, whoever's taking pictures at these events. So that's a snapshot of that. And then, you know, if you click on one, then there's more details. Um, 
It will tell you, you know, where you can get tickets, how much they cost, things like that. And then we have um, resources. So <clears throat> some of these are, you might recognize from um, features from um, the phone book. So the Bowen Bird Guide, that was a feature of last, the current uh, 2022 issue that's out. Gardening with Native Plants was the year before. Um, we've got um, Meet Some of Bowen Island's Artists and um, there's uh, they're also in the phone book, but um, they're here digitally too. Um, and Facebook groups of Bowen. So if anyone wants to find out if there's a, a club um, or what have you that would be of interest to them, that's all here and they can, um, there's links to those um, Facebook groups. Uh, useful phone numbers. So this is information provided by the municipality for the phone book and I've adapted it here. Um, so it's uh, available online if you're off island or what have you, you don't have your phone book. Um, and actually there needs to be some um, revisions to it since we have a new council. So I'll, I'll get on that. Um, and emergency support services, it's, it's all there. Um, and then, uh, oh yeah, clubs, groups, and associations of Bowen. Um, this is uh, again, similar to what's in the phone book, but uh, um, nice to have it somewhere digitally too. So this is all, all the uh, groups and organizations on Bowen that uh, are listed in the phone book. Oh, can't even get to the end. All right. And uh, History of phone book covers, that's a feature from the last article. I did want to highlight uh, Ron Woodall's art um, because he's not only a cartoonist, he does all kinds of fantastic things. Uh, he's done books, uh, paintings of uh, old rural uh, Americana architecture. He's got, so I've got cartoons, portraits, painted Bowen seed, scenes, painted archival Bowen photos, and then some of his um, original paintings. So like if you go to painted Bowen scenes, it'll jump ahead. Um, I wonder if this one's a little, oh, there we go. So, um, you know, I, I thought that all his work should be archived somewhere and he was excited by that um, possibility. So. We worked together and um, got a lot of these um, little goodies up there. Um, and then of course his portraits, I'm just gonna speed to the top here. Um, and his cartoons, there's still more to come, but that, that's loaded, I don't know, hundreds. Uh, I've lost my scroll bar because of this. Okay, maybe I'll move it over, there we go. Um, And, and then there's articles. So um, just working on some in the background right now, there'll be more to come, but um, you know, just fun. It's, it's all about Bowen Islander. It's not um, aimed at tourists. It's, uh, I mean, if tourists wanna look at it, um, that's great, but it, it is, um, there is already the tourism, um, Bowen Island tourism site. So I wasn't trying to recreate that, but um, have something that's, uh, you know, more for uh, our residents. Um, and so there's, there's a bunch of different things. There's uh, hiking, hiking trails. And um, this was really interesting um, to, you know, we think we know the restaurants that are around, but there's there's just so much more um, to tap into um, as far as, you know, like making making a, a picnic uh, lunch, weekly dinners at the Legion. Um, it's 
sort of everything is covered off. Uh, you know, Copper Spirit Distillery, General Store, restaurants that serve alcohol. So um, that was kind of fun to do. And um, let me go back one step. I'm almost done. Um, uh, yeah, um, sea kayaking and stand up paddling um, roots, um, you know, topsoil article. And then this is a fun uh, bucket list for locals. Like, you know, you think you've done it all. You've lived here a while, um, you know, maybe maybe there's some fun stuff that you haven't done and uh you know just to get inspired to get out and uh um and and do something either in nature or in the community so um that's pretty much everything um and um i'm happy to answer any questions um the idea of um that steph uh, suggesting that I come and speak to you today is that I know you're trying to um, maybe have something that's very current that uh, you know you can put weekly updates of what's happening on Bowen, what restaurants are open, what uh, activities are current or events. And so the thought was, well, this it could be another one of the across the top, one of these tabs could be for you know current conditions although we wouldn't want to use that it reminds us of the ferry but um a weekly status report or you know something something like that so i haven't talked to my web developer he's an islander um but i well, i could ask him you know what would be involved in having you know a separate category for that and it wouldn't be something that I would try and maintain it. Um, the idea is that someone from your committee uh, might maintain it. So we try and make that as easy as possible and streamlined. And since it's this is already set up and has a lot of the resources that people would be looking for, it might be a good place for it. And we are working, even though it is um, for Islanders, of course, it does help Islanders if um, if there's um, business coming from off island, um, people um, patronizing our businesses, so there is um, there is SEO uh, search engine optimization going on, on in the background to uh, you know help um, people uh, find what they need on Bowen Island or activities to do or what have you. So, are there any questions? Great, thank you, <laughs> Claudia. Um, just have a couple of comments. I'm assuming that the business directory here is based on uh, pulling it from the printed version, which means anybody who's paid to advertise in the phone phone book or is on here, but not necessarily every business, right? Actually, um, no, it is. Um every business that has a license with the municipality is great. in okay. for free great. Um, and businesses that want to upgrade their page um, you know add a banner photo or you know active links to their website or email things like that then th they pay for that but um, it's full of free listings. If, if someone has a window cleaning business and they have a license with BIM, then they're listed there. So it, it's, it's very comprehensive in that way because mm -hmm. it's not dependent on just who is buying a placement. Right. And I'm assuming that we can't, you can't put the residential uh, contact information no, I online for privacy reasons. Yeah, okay. yeah. No, no, no one would be happy with that. I don't think so. No, that is not online. Okay. <clears throat> Jody, did you have any questions or? Uh, no, no. I mean, there's definitely like, there's definitely crossover. So, um, 
uh, and somehow I'm, um, I mean, obviously there's a lot in here, Claudia, which is amazing. Um, but I, I, sorry, I'm lost on where the, I don't fully understand, I guess, what the update thing is. Maybe explain a bit more about that. Maybe I missed that conversation about, is the ECDEV committee wanting um, another activity kind of listing? I'm sorry, I'm, I am a lot at loss about that. Okay, uh, uh, Steph, you go ahead. Yeah, that would um, that didn't translate super accurately, possibly due to my lack of super <laughs> clarity. I know that Martin has been talking about developing an app, and Kirsten has been very talking about developing an app. It came up in our discussion last month to loop Claudia into that discussion, so I'm looping Claudia into that discussion. When That's Steph, all I, my, when, I know about this project. <laughs> when Steph suggested that um, I come and speak, it's in case he, the committee would like to piggyback on this with um, instead of the the, um, the effort and expense of going, uh, you know, designing and developing an app or a different website um, that it was a possibility that um, um, that that could be done with an existing site. Vaughn, can you yeah. see that counts? Oh, sorry, Martin, go ahead. Sorry, no, go ahead. You go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, this is great. And uh, I just want to comment on the what we've been referring to as an app, uh, but it's actually uh, not a new app, but it's something that sits in the back and would definitely try to uh, empower, as uh, Julie said, the overlap of uh, uh, that exists between this project and many other great ones. Uh, so there's a lot of work that's gone into cataloging these things. They already have an audience and one thing, at least from uh, the perspective of the of the project that uh, you refer to as an app, is not to replace any of this, but definitely to empower. And you can almost think about it as a database sitting in the back of supply and demand information. And then the developer of your site could uh, tap into it to get the latest up-to-date data before showing it on your site as it is right now but multiple other portals could do the same, all sourcing from the uh, sort of like centralized community managed backend data store. Thank you. Um, Vaughn, um, Councillor Jerkinson has his hand up. Oh, sorry, I'm not seeing that. Please go ahead. <laughs> Oh, no, that's no problem. I just wanted to say, Claudia, really impressed with uh, all the work that you've done and would like to support it in any way that I can. Sorry, that I can. Thank you. Um, and just to your comment there about asking a web developer how easy it would be to add an update section there, that would be fairly tri trivial to do. Mm -hmm. um, I'm speaking from, from a web development background myself, so it, uh, I, I think that definitely would be be possible but really love all the synergy around this table right now mm -hmm. um for those of you who don't know my background is in 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 uh web services and engineering one of my one of my backgrounds and uh seeing how all this data is being put to good community use is, is fantastic and uh, thank you claudia for very much for uh, all that you do to, to feed into that I think one of the biggest challenges with all of these uh, different sources of information is, is keeping them up to date, right? So, um, you know, we've talked about if for if it's very Bowen resident centric, just to know when things are open, for instance, you know, but that might change from week to week. And so um, it's almost impossible, you know, you have to rely on every business to go and make sure that they, 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 update all of their information all of the time. Um, and especially if they have a website and then they're, you know, if they have to do it on your site and then they do it on the tourism site and they, you know, whatever else we have, those are, those are real challenges. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but at, at currently, so you're adding events in Claudia or you're asking people and then you're saying people can also add in events like submit yes, events, both. events both. to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
okay. I can do it for them or they can do it themselves. Um, but I, it is open to anyone adding an event. Um, it goes, it, it, then it's just pending for review through me only because, you know, want to make sure it's actually a Bowen Island event and not something in town that someone's promoting. So, but yes, that then I would just set it to publish live um, once that's confirmed. Right. Um, I think the other thing that comes to mind is that we had been, uh, something that we have been wanting, well, we have been supporting over the years is the, the Bowen Neighborhood Guide. Is that what it's called? Neighbor, neighbor Guide? Good Neighbor? Welcome Neighbor. Welcome Neighbor Guide. And I think it's... It's the newcomer's guide, I think, isn't it called? The newcomer's guide, sorry. Newcomer's guide. Which, mm -hmm. which I think is incredibly useful because not only does it give you information, you know, like sort of logistical things or, you know, but it gives you the sense of the culture of, of the of the island, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so what, mm -hmm. what fairy etiquette, you know, fairy lineup etiquette is. And, mm -hmm. you know. I actually have that uh, guide and I, I spoke to... Um, not sure if it was Janet at BIM, but to get permission to um, update it where needed and have it on the website. So that's on my to-do list. Oh, good. Because it hasn't been updated now for a few years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we were talking about how to support that potentially. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, good to know. This is all going to go in the mix. And Kirsten also had some ideas, has been working with Martin about what we were sort of thinking about in terms of a digital presence. So I think that's just really good information, Claudia. And I think as a committee, we'll regroup and, and when Kirsten's available too, and maybe talk more about where we want to go with all of that. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, thanks very much. That was yeah. really great. No worries. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Claudia. Bye. Anybody have any other thoughts around that? Because I like what you yeah. said, Martin. It sounds really, I still don't understand the technology as you're describing it completely, but it sounds to me like it might be something that we do want to look into to, to really... Uh, you know, sort of amalgamate all of these different yeah, excellent absolutely. resources like, that are out there. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, basically catalog projects like this and then uh, try to empower the overlap because there is overlap between them. And I think that overlap is actually uh, a positive thing, not a negative, as long as we can sort of feed them from a uh, more up-to-date backend data store. So that, you know, if something is updated in one place, it gets updated in all of them, but people can use whichever portal they want to get to the information. Okay, so I don't think we had a formal working group for this, but uh, you were working with Kirsten, were you not? Yeah. We don't have this formalized yet, actually, because yeah. we were going to do that uh, review sort of presentation uh, at our next meeting for the technology for the for the, for the platform, the backend platform. Okay. Uh, but we've chatted with uh, Kristen on the little bit, yeah. Okay, so you are going to do the presentation at the next meeting. That's the plan, yeah. Perfect. Okay, we'll just put that on the agenda, and then we can uh, go from there. I feel like Sat wanted to say something. Oh, Sat, did you want to say something? Sure. Um, I'm going to turn my uh, video on just to say hi to everyone so you can see my face. But uh, I've had a uh, particularly meeting heavy day, as I'm sure some of you have as well, but can't be on, a, on the camera right now. <laughs> <laughs> I need to rest my eyes a bit as well. Um, okay. Yeah, I just, I mean, obviously, it's, it's great work that, that you know, Claudia has done. I echo what everyone else has said. Um, my only comment I, I would I would maybe emphasize a bit, and I think it was mentioned very at the, very early on, or one of the first comments is is a tie-in with um, going out and tourism, and and just making sure you know that is sort of in terms of an economic development perspective that li that's a pretty important tie-in I think in terms of what people might look to or or go towards uh, initially anyways when there's sort you know 
trying to assess out Bowen Island, at least at least a significant resource. And Jody, I don't I know it's probably it sounds like you're just kind of trying to wrap your head around what this all means, but I think just making sure that that piece gets tied into whatever whatever direction this goes, um, you know, isn't lost. Great. Yeah, I'll, I'll just add, um, yeah, I mean, I think if you would, if you search Bowen Island, you know, Tourism Bowen Island's website comes up first. And we do, um, our website's been, we're in the process of getting a new website. It's been a bit um, broken the last couple of years. Um, so it's going to be updated in that. So, um, yeah, so it will be eventually in about two months, nice and shiny and new and have events and stuff. Um, I, I just wanna, and I said this at the last meeting, I think, you know, well, it might be nice for us all to wanna have things organized and events or, you know, when a restaurant changes its hours, um, having done this for a few years, it's kind of, you're, you're never going to have that. It's really difficult. They're all small businesses. They're all working on the fly. The Google listing might say one thing. If a staff member is sick in the morning, that, that, that bakery might be closed. I mean, it just is going. And from my perspective, let's embrace that as this is Bowen, small island, uh, quirky, you know, you're not going to expect the urban kind of um, things. So that's, that's my take on it rather than trying to, to be accurate all the time, just go, Hey, that's Bowen, you know, and yeah, don't expect <laughs> here are the hours, but uh, if somebody's sick, it might not be open, that kind of thing. So have to go with the flow, go with the flow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Let's move on to our next item, which is um, the business license program year end review. And Daniel, you're on the call. Hi. Hello. Hi, Vaughn. Thank you. Um, so I have a presentation um, for the committee that I gave to council at their January 9th meeting, I believe, and I'll um, go over some of that same information with you. Here, I gave a similar presentation to the ECAC committee, I believe probably last January. Um, so this is again, sort of an overview of, of our business licensing for 2022. Uh, let's see, okay. So this was sort of the, you know, the headline of, of the report we put together is number of, of licenses that we issued by year. And so you can see um, sort of the, we had a, large increase in the overall number of, of licenses that we issued in 2022 compared with 2021. Um, and most significantly, we saw big increases in the short-term rental pieces. So the residential guest accommodation and the bed and breakfast saw big increases, um, as did the contractor and the non-resident business. Um, and so in the report, I go a little detail in terms of the non-resident business. Um, some of that We've become over the years much more strict about even linking um, like building permit applications and issuance of building permits on um, ensuring that all the various sub trades of a business of a building permit and building activity are licensed. So whereas previously we would seek it from the you know the contractor and some of the professionals involved, um, now we're much more I think thorough in terms of requiring that. Um, you know, most of the variety of sub trades are licensed, and that's been one, you know, increase for that. It's quite a, um, yeah, it's quite, it's been quite an effective tool in terms of, you know, withholding issuing a building permit until we can know that the various sub trades are, are licensed can drive license applications much more than um, other means of enforcement. Uh, and then the other piece going to is just the, the large increase in short term rental businesses. Um, the residential guest accommodation and the bed and breakfast. And I estimate in the report um, what I think I said sort of, we estimate maybe 60% of that were um, through better monitoring and better able to find short-term licenses and about 40% through just new new businesses opening up. So I'm sure everyone on, on the committee has noticed like post COVID, you know, Jody more than anyone, post COVID like increase in tourism activity on Bowen. And this is sort of another marker of that. Um, then the report just goes into just the revenue generated by the program. And again, you'd see with the big increase in licenses, the 
big increase in, in license revenue. So um, from our first year of operation where there was $23,000 in business license revenue, they increased to 2022, we had 73,000. Um, and then I have in the report on the short-term rental monitoring that Hamari is the company that we employ to monitor short-term rentals. Um, and so they had identified in December 173 active listings. And then I'll just go to this slide. Um, I just took a look this afternoon to update to see what the difference was from February compared to December when I pulled the, the stats from the um, for the report, but it's it's largely the same. So it's now showing 176 active listings. Um, I want to flag too that the the way Hamari flags it is different than than our method. So one, the 176 active listings would include um, places that, for example, would have multiple bed and breakfast rooms. Um, so if you have four rooms for your bed and breakfast and you list each of them individually, they would count that as four active listings. And we would say that's one license. So the numbers don't quite match. And um, here it flags 58% of active listings identified. And that's sort of saying the same issue. So when I'd reported this in January, I said of the 173 active, there were maybe two or three that we hadn't identified. And I think that's still the case. It's sort of the handful of new listings maybe we haven't identified, but otherwise, um, if Hamari flags the listing as, as showing up on a short term, so Airbnb or BRBO or, or any of those sites, that we, we are able to identify the listing. Um, and then I just had some more stats from the presentation, just showing um, Hamari tracks and estimates the number of listings over time. So you see this sort of flat through 2020, you'd kind of expect through COVID and then starting, you know, mid 2021, we've had this large increase. So if in mid 2020, we had 80 listings and now we're at 180 listings. So we've more than doubled in, in a couple of years or three years, I guess. Um, and same with Hamari estimates, revenue from short-term rentals. So they estimate it based on um, that they know the sort of the average price of the listing and then the number of days occupied. And so again, they see um, the revenue brought in for short-term rental operators. Obviously, you know, in, in 2019, 930,000, then the big, um, you know, effect of COVID in 2020 growth, like coming back to that same level in 2021 and then 2022 seen it, you know, exceed pre-COVID levels. Um, and then this is just showing Hamari lists when, when an ad was created. So trying to estimate when a business started operating. So it's showing about 17% of the total listings were created in 2022. Um, and then obviously much lower numbers created in 2021 and, and 2020. Um, so that was sort of my presentation for the report. And then no, Council referred this to the committee for information, sort of for your background knowledge, um, but I'm happy to take any questions at this point or discussion. Jody? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm somewhat confused. Like you say the Homari, so say I had a listing and I had two bedrooms, but I'm really only one listing. You're saying Homari, will count it as two listings, yeah. correct? Okay. Yeah, so we would count it as one business license, but Hamari would say, oh, we found two listings. Yeah, so that's where I'm getting confused. So then in, in total, maybe if you go, I don't know. So how many, what's the estimate on actually how many uh, short-term rentals there are or short-term and b and does, does that go, like is your, if you go back to the slides, is that the more yeah. accurate total then? Yeah, I would say I think that's it was more 121, accurate. right? So in terms of our listings, it's 70 RGAs and 50 bed and breakfast. That's 120. 120. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah, it's um it it could for some people, I know when I saw some dialogue on Facebook or something, well, look at the increase and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I think 120 was roughly the estimate a few years ago as well. So I'm just trying to be clear on whether or not they're actually, and there's turnover too. Somebody might do it for a while yeah. and then they stop. The, I mean, it, it's, it's ever changing. So, but it kind of, if it's, if we're sitting at 120, if I remember when Emma did it, that was kind of roughly the estimate back then as well. 
Yeah, I mean, I think though, I think we have seen an increase. I mean, yeah, this is this is mis this is hard to it's hard to gauge too in terms of yeah, what is the growth of actual listings versus like you know now we've licensed more. So you see in this slide from twenty twenty one, we've licensed forty, and now we've listed one hundred and twenty. So yeah. the one hundred and twenty is much more accurate in terms of what the listings actually are, and the forty clearly wasn't. Yeah, um, and and then you said there was. A between what you feel is licensed and what Hamari is identified, I, if I recall correctly, there's like, you think there's only two or something, very low uh, difference, correct? Correct. Yeah, so probably last year when I gave this presentation, you know, and Hamari estimated number of listings, there were many more that we hadn't identified, whereas now we would say, no, we're, we're pretty confident that if you're listing on Airbnb, um, that we've identified. Yeah, where where it is and and required you to get a license. Okay, is that good, Jody? Yeah, just one more one more thought. Okay. So then, if there's a discrepancy between what Hamari does, is the benefit of being on Hamari is the fact that it is monitoring it? Um, is that the main yeah. main benefit of it? Is just monitoring it and. <laughs> And recognizing yeah. the discrepancy, we it still gives a good measurement. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. So okay. they monitor it, they document it. Um, they're valuable even in terms of so our, our residential guest accommodation has a maximum number of days, um, mm -hmm. and so they will actually document like the number of days that a place is used, and they'll document yeah. reviews. And so, you know, at the end of last year, there were a handful maybe that we had to contact to say you've, you know, you. It, it appears that you've exceeded this and this is, you know, your conditions of your license. And then we can actually point to like reviews. So it's not just that you'd blocked it out for three months because your your mother came to stay in the place, right? But it's that look at all these reviews every weekend from people who came to stay in your place. Right. Um, okay. so they're very yeah. valuable for that piece. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Councillor Jurgensen, do you have a question? I do. Um, Daniel, would I be correct in understanding also that another useful insight is seeing how much accommodation is, because even though it's one listing for us from a municipal standpoint, it tells you how many rooms and things are being rented on Bowen. So like somebody might have four rooms under one listing and Hamari's data probably gives us a better sense of what that is, does it not? <laughs> Yes, it does. We'd have to dig into it a little more because still, if you were listing, you know, the entire house, yeah, the active listings would say that's one active listing. But then we would have to look at, okay, of the listings, how many listings are multiple bedrooms? Oh, um, okay. Yeah, or sometimes in Hamari, even it'll flag it. Like if you had four bedrooms for a bed and breakfast, some yeah. people would list them all individually, four listings, but then they would list, you know, a unit that would be renting all four bedrooms if somebody wanted to rent all four bedrooms at once. And that would be a fifth listing now in the, in the how Hamari catalogs it. Okay. So it does give us some better insight into that, but not as much as I was thinking. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sad. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Daniel. Uh, just a couple of questions. One is kind of picking up on, on what Judy said, um, or Jody said, sorry, in terms of, the number um, of listings, I know we're comparing 2021 to 2022 and, and maybe it would be helpful. I know you're not looking for comments, so <laughs> I recognize that, but <laughs> this is a comment. <laughs> maybe it, it would be helpful for the community, like the conversations that are happening in the community, which are very valuable, to have a little bit more context in terms of uh, looking back a few more years. You know, you show the revenue um, increase and then drop because of COVID and then, you know, increase again. Um, maybe showing that listings um, might help that because I think, you know, oh my gosh, we've doubled or whatever we are now in 20, from 2021 to 2022, but maybe if you jump back to 2019, mm -hmm. it's more comparable. I don't know. Anyways, um, the other question I have though is, is it possible to get a breakdown of the listings by neighborhood or area on the island? Mm -hmm. um, and, and where I'm kind of coming at this from is a bit of a sustainable tourism perspective, right? And that, that conversation is going to continue. To, well, short-term rental conversation is going to continue to evolve. And I know sustainable tourism is sort of a core principle. And so if we start to get a better understanding of where, if there's groupings or where the bulk of, of these um, listings are, um, you know, that might help, help us in some way. 
Sure. So, um, yeah, like I think there's a limit to how far what sort of historic information we have. So one, it's like, you know, we only permitted the, um, we only started licensing in 2019. We only permitted the short term, the residential guest accommodation recently. And then a Hamari has some his historical data, but more of it is more accurate since we started using them and they more actively um, monitored Bowen. Um, and then, I mean, it would be possible on, you know, if we ever dive more deeply into short-term rental, it's possible to do that. So this is just that Hamari, like our dashboard. Um, so it, they do map the location of places and you see here, it's sort of just broken down at groups um, where they are. And so I could, yeah, if, if the committee was discussing this in more detail, we do have that, um, okay. that information we could provide. Yeah. Sounds good. Thanks, Anne. Um, I just have a question. Um, Daniel, I think I read something earlier at the end of last year that the that the short term rental policy would be coming up for review this year, or there was a recommendation to do it or something like that. Yeah, I mean, that's something that that we have flagged and had that conversation um, with Council. And so even when I presented this um, in January, there was some Council discussion about the need for that. Mm -hmm. And sort of in light of the fact that, you know, we, we adopted the short term rental changes. Um, we then, you know, sort of simultaneously entered COVID, we've come out of COVID. You know, from my, my opinion, I think it's worthwhile to have a, you know, a further sort of community conversation in terms of short term rental regulations. Yeah, because my sense is that from other things I've I also read last year or end of, near the end of last year was that it didn't sound like the municipality was all that in favor of supporting the policy. In other words, in lieu of you know shortages in, in long term uh, rentals availability kind of thing, it just sounded to me, and I could be wrong because I was just reading. <laughs> comments and and reports and things that uh, potentially there was some worry at the municipal level that the numbers of short-term rentals might affect or are affecting the you know the numbers of long-term rentals that are available and so I wondered if that was sort of spurring that on this this sort of uh, I mean I can see how a review would be good because now that's in, it's been in place it wasn't really you know, because there was no visitors, it wasn't, people weren't really actively, you know, opening their businesses again, right? So now you've had some time to say, okay, we've got 120 units now, right, that are operating, and, and where is this going? And I'm just going to be very frank. I've also heard some comments from the community, various members in the community over time, that the application process is is difficult in some cases. Um, some of the requirements are, you know, pretty stringent and it's even leading to inquiries about properties that are just looking to get a, a short-term uh, uh, license, rental license, um, that their, their properties are being scrutinized for, you know, for instance, other infractions that, you know, it, uh, something done without a permit or, a, or something too close to a property line or this kind of thing sort of falling is, is coming as a fallout of the process. And so I, all I would say is, I guess my whole point in this is I do think, uh, you know, a review would be good. And I think part of the review would be really useful is to have current license holders, um, you know, uh, basically surveyed about their experience and what works and what doesn't that type of thing in the context of where does the municipality want to go with this overall, <laughs> right? Because I know Sorry, just other, a, uh, other just communities are, are cutting or even cutting back on their short-term rental. Uh, yeah. Point, point of order here, folks. Uh, I This might be unusual stuff, but I need to declare a conflict of interest. Uh, oh in this because I do have an RGA in our house and we're starting to uh, get into talking a little bit about policy making in RGAs. So if you, I'm gonna leave the room Steph, if you can just ping me with an email when the conversation's done, I'll come back in. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, I'll be quick. All, all I'm suggesting is that I think as a committee, we would be very interested in uh, contributing somehow to a conversation around a review if that comes around. Mm -hmm. That's all I guess I really want to leave sure. it at. And, and then Vaughn, if I could just say, I mean, I think there there's always a concern in terms of like short-term rental and potential impact on like the long-term rental market mm -hmm. and what impact that is and sort of yeah. what's the, the level of that. And then, um, and then, I mean, it's something, frankly, we've sort of wrestled with over the last couple of years in terms of licensing short-term rental units and sort of what's the, what's in the obligation, like if the municipality is licensing a, a business, um, to what level do we go to ensure that we can say that, you know, this, this is a sleeping accommodation that's safe for the, the use that we've licensed it for. Um, and in some cases, it's challenging on Bowen in terms of, um, you know, we have cases where somebody built, a, you know, an accessory building, a woodshed that's now been converted into a sleeping place. And so what sort of requirements are we, are we seeking to place on it to be able to license, um, license that and say this, yeah. is, this is safe for, for, for visitors to come and stay and, and knowing that that has higher um, sort of safety implications in terms of it's not somebody who knows the building and knows the site, but the expectation is there'll be, you know, people unfamiliar with the building entering it. And so what are, I guess, I guess yeah. all, I guess I'm saying from what I've been hearing <clears throat> and from, and just in light of the fact that there might be a review, um, I think it, I, first of all, I think, I think from a, just from a municipal standpoint, you have to be clear about whether, you know, this, this is a bylaw that was passed, right? It was, it was enacted. Mm -hmm. So uh, if it's changed now, uh, the, the, sentiment of the municipality that you know maybe this isn't good for our community or it needs to be adjusted somehow i would also think that part of the review should include the people who have actually obtained licenses and gone through the process yeah. and etc uh, etc et because i'm just going to say like anecdotally if i look at 120 units i don't think that's a whole lot of different from well, they, you know they had the revenue from 2018 given inflation doesn't sound to me like, you know, there's a huge influx more of new uh, rentals available. And I thought, and I had a conversation with one of the counselors last year about this, that they were seen as important economic um, activity for the community. I mean, we don't have hotels, you, you know, even, even Bowen Island residents need places for family and friends to stay, never mind just the average tourist. So. I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> Jody, did you want to add something? Yeah. Yeah, I just want to say, uh, Daniel, to your point about safety, I, in the past, um, in the early days when I was doing the visitor center, I certainly know some people that rented something and they were not happy. I remember one couple in particular, they were very displeased about what they saw online and then what they ended up getting. So mm. um, I, I, so I, I totally support that there has to be regulations and, and things like that um, and being clear about that. Uh, but I also think a, a review, Vaughn, as you're suggesting is good from my perspective. And I don't think there has been that, like I'm saying, I remember Emma saying about 120, you know, a few years ago. And mm -hmm. so, but it comes and goes, somebody buys a house, they do <clears throat> for a bit and there's also different reasons why people do short-term rentals there's no way and this is where I'm I'm wanting to get the the data now that we're collecting the data where is the intention is good in the sense that let's not have short-term rentals that take away long-term rentals but there's always seems to me be a bit of data to support that that um that the short-term rentals are actually taking away from long because people do short-term rentals for various reasons family and friends come to visit you know that kind of thing so i think it's really once we're getting this data that we're now getting is are we seeing that and i do know some people that decide that they don't want to go through the painful process or whatever so they did shift to long term but it's it's a it's a real it's way more complex <laughs> than um then it looks on the surface and with the data, hopefully it will allow us to have a better 
look at that and we don't have a hotel. We talk about visitors coming, being low impact. So if they come and they say for a couple of days, they spend more money. I mean, there's all these things that you have to build out um, to your point, Vaughn, that economic development, you know, somebody comes and stays for a couple of days, they spend more money, they become more of this culture, they're less wear and tear on the ferry, you know, so there's all those pros and cons to, that need to be looked at as well. <laughs> so much for no comment needed, Daniel. <laughs> no. no, this is great. Um, thank you for the, the time for the discussion. <laughs> okay, does anybody else uh, want to say anything or should we let Daniel go? Okay. Thank you, Th thanks. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks, Daniel. Okay. Thanks, Vaughn. Thanks for having me. Okay. Can we get the mayor back? I've emailed him. Okay. Thanks. Just for my clarification, what's an R? I think he used the acronym RGA or residential residential guest accommodation. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, so next item uh, we have, I think we're, we, Steph, we're going to go through the action items really quickly. Okay. Uh, you have them in your agenda. I can share screen. I don't know that anyone's done them, but that's okay because they are not what we're working on right now. So I'll just whiz through. Can you see it? Not yet. There we go. So um, Vaughn was to touch base with Levin about the donut economy and members were to take a look at those donut economy links. This won't be talked about today, so you don't have to admit if you did or didn't, but just keeping that on the radar. Um, Kirsten is working on the report regarding co-working space. Uh, um, it's not finished. That's okay, she's been working very hard. Martin will do a presentation next week. Jody was going to provide travel data for BIMTAC. I, I will, but I haven't completed the, the, okay. the build out of that. Okay, and then we just have this um, uh, internal resolution regarding the follow-up activities for the staff housing survey. There were there was talk of talking to business owners to see if we can support some kind of safe relationship with potential renters. Again, I think we're going to need to defer this discussion to next. Yeah, and I think we are going to, as in previous years, look at forming some uh, working committees, which you know basically meet outside of our meetings, get real work done, <laughs> and, then and report, report back in, and report back in. So perhaps yeah. that's that's going to be on our list. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That's all. Okay, so now we're uh, moving on to the Rural Islands Economic Partnership. Um, Councillor Jurgensen, are you familiar with this organization? In uh, passing, but not uh, greatly, no. Okay. So just quickly, it is a group of 18 rural islands who are not otherwise uh, represented. Um, like some of them are part, uh, for instance, there's, um, there's, there's other regional or provincial uh, entities that other islands fall within. And it was felt that uh, spurred on by uh, a woman involved in economic development on Salt Spring Island and a few others to gather these rural islands right from the San Juans to I think Malcolm Island might be the most Northern one. So we're included in that bunch to come together and share information about, you know, uh, challenges, successes, you know, different things and have it as sort of a bigger voice as a group that we otherwise don't have individually and access to even perhaps, perhaps uh, funding opportunities and that type of thing that we again wouldn't as individual islands. So in 2019, they held the very first in-person forum, which uh, I, I did attend as uh, I think there was six Bowen people uh, attending. 
it was fabulous, really great uh, experience. And I thought very useful. And coming up this April is the next in-person forum. So they've been doing a few things online um, or by Zoom, but now there's gonna be another one, a gathering uh, at near the end of April um, on Gabriola. So I am now um, very interested in having Bowen um, participate in this. Um, not just myself, other people have been uh, one of our form, the former chair of our committee, Rod Marsh was on their board. And then when he resigned, I took the board position. Um, and now we're uh, right into the programming. I'm also on the program development committee for this upcoming session. So there's the snapshot. Um, and really, um, again, I think it's going to be a, a fantastic program. It's two and a half days. And there is a program meeting a week from now. And so uh, I really wanted to talk to this committee, um, just take a few minutes to, to, to talk about how we might participate. Now, traditionally, we have put some a little bit of money in the budget to help support uh, Bowen Islanders participate because there is a registration fee. And of course, there's a cost to get there and stay there. Um, some of the, I mean, we're trying to make the, the program very interactive and, and they're even calling it an unconference. So they don't want people sitting around in plenaries all day long. <laughs> you know, there's gonna be activities and things too to just sort of, you know, make it more interesting. But really, I think the benefit is that most islands, well, have either land and or uh, uh, water transportation issues. So that's going to be high on the agenda. And I believe they're going to try and get the new CEO of BC Ferries there. Um, and there's, very, there's, there's some common issues across islands. Um, you know, aside from just business, um, uh, transportation issues, obviously, uh, housing issues, um, food resiliency, um, you know, there's, there's ways to share resources, ways to maybe do bulk buying together. I mean, there's, there's lots of things to do or ways that I think we can learn from each other instead of like, you know, sort of reinventing the wheel. And because we all have these commonalities, I think it's very useful. So what I guess what I'm saying is, um, I can tell you just what a, a few general kind of, um, ideas that are coming up already and then are there things and or people on Bowen Island who should be there you know that we would want to participate what how can we get the most benefit out of this we can probably support five or six registration fees you know at least that kind of thing um oh I should and I should say they are they are taking donut economics as an overarching theme for the conference. So just using those values, that value system in sort of determining what sessions and that kind of thing. They also will have some sessions, for instance, where you can sign up on a particular topic and knowing that you'll workshop your way through that topic while you're there. And you're also committing to going home and working on it in your group, you know, virtually after that, so that there's actually you know, actions that are taken after this, this, this program. Um, and leave and I am going to address the fact that you did answer me about your knowledge of don't donut economics is quite extensive. So I, you know, uh, I guess what I would say is they have not, they will open the conference with a plenary around that the concept and then probably make it more interesting without it just being simply a, you know, a presenter and a story. But, you know, uh, you know, could I, for instance, um, suggest that you be involved in that? Would you be interested? Um, that type of thing. Yes. I also thought perhaps, for instance, reaching out to the other uh, committee chairs or committees on island people who are engaged in specific issues and ask and sort of, you know, giving a framework and just saying like, 
Is there something in particular that Bowen is doing really well or struggling with that could be, um, you know, uh, it could be beneficial to go to the conference about or present, either present, facilitate a session, uh, you know, uh, do a showcase thing, you know, something kind of thing. Okay, I'm stopping talking now. Anybody have some ideas? <laughs> hmm. Well, Vaughn, to buy into that, I sent you a message back also. So I've been working with this donut economics thing already for the last four or five years, also with Kate Rewards directly. So we are involved in the whole Amsterdam economic, uh, donut economy. We've been exploring it also to work together with the mayor of Squamish to do it. And I think it's an amazing possibility for Bowen. We've been looking into that. So we've already been making some informal plans to do land row around that. Um, and yeah, the whole principle, I, we can take some time in another session with each other also to explain a little bit about the donic economics. But it's it's about it's ring fencing also the value of, this, of a region. So an island is a perfect fit <laughs> for the model gates developed. Um, and there's a big need, I think, if you want to integrate. And so all of the conflicts of interests we have on Bowen and on all islands is where economics, social, uh, ecology, all of these things come together. She really crafted a very beautiful platform, not only so with deals, so with her network also, where you send the information from also in the, in the agenda, um, the lab. But also with the whole model she created, there's so much knowledge there to help communities build a yeah, bring these things together. And that's that's where at this moment, uh, there's always when there's growth, there's tension in how far can you go, but it's beautifully integrated. So I'm really I'm really willing to step up there. So uh, if it's needed, if I need to present something or prepare some things, there's so much beautiful things happening around the world about that. So, it, uh, and I think Bowen is a perfect case, but there's also a lot happening in the region. So uh, also yeah. in Vancouver, in some neighborhoods, they try to build it up. So um, yeah, there's a lot of, positive sparks on the, especially after COVID and these big things in, in crises also economically, how to look differently, there's, um, there's possibilities. And Nanaimo has done some great work also in the last half a year. So their results are also quite interesting to share with each other. So um, no, there's a lot going on. And uh, so that's just to answer. So uh, yeah, definitely looking into that. I think what she gives in her platform and her way of thinking is an integration of sorry. all of the different. Oh, sorry, Kate Rewards. So the oh, founder Kate. of okay, yeah. economics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. sorry. Yeah. Uh, so the, the one that founded the whole movement, yeah. and then the way she created uh, the, the knowledge database around it to share knowledge and to share how you can do it. It's, it's, it's really yeah. I think it's it's a it's a platform where we can try gently integrating all of these things that didn't work out last year also with our strategic plan. This is strategic framework. So that's a, that's a lot of from my end, but willing to take some time to present, for example, in the next meeting or so, or uh, whatever it's necessary. Well, what about at, the, at the forum? Are you around April 25th to 7th? I don't know yet. I'm, I still have to plan quite a lot of travels, but I might be. Yeah. So that's the last week of April that you say? Uh, April 25th to the 27th. The chances are major that I'm here. Yeah. Okay, well, let's speak it's about a, that a uh, separately yeah. again. Um, anybody okay. else have any ideas? Um, from a community economic development perspective, uh, and I don't really know anything about it, but um, because of the, what the work I'm just doing right now, um, including um, social well-being metrics. It's one thing, you know, you've got economic, you know, gross domestic product, but um, well-being metrics in a community if you're trying to support that. Um, and at, at the council meeting on Monday night, and I don't know her, but her name is Lori. She did a nice presentation about values-based framework. Um, and maybe Steph or um, Andrew want to speak to it or, or Councillor Jerkinson or something, but that really got me interested and I want to maybe talk to her. Um, hmm. So if this, if this form is maybe open to people that have certain expertise that can bring it in and maybe add value or broaden a perspective. Um, I, I think there's quite a lot of talented people on Bowen Island and 
and for one is is Lori, and I can't remember her name. I know it was a difficult last name. Um, is somebody that that I certainly want to talk about and learn a bit more about values based uh, framework. I know that uh, one of the one of the topics they have already somebody has suggested is regenerative tourism, destination stewardship. So I don't know exactly what they're talking about, but hmm. Um, regenerative tourism is certainly something like it, it, it's how you define it in a community, but the idea is trying to change the way tourism done so that it is more positive as opposed to negative. So once again, it's bringing in those social values, environmental stewardship. It, it's drawing in a lot of things. Um, you know, Destination Canada is going that way. Um, we're in the process of doing um, a tourism plan and I'm hoping that we'll be able to put some of those, those uh, regenerative tourism approaches into the plan. Um, my take on it, and this is where the whole donut economics comes in, is that it's not just regenerative tourism. We have to, everything we do nowadays has to be regenerative, you know? Um, so I love the donut economics because it brings in that thing because we all have to um, do better and be much more conscious of our impact. Is it positive, negative? Is it beneficial? All, all those kinds of things. So I, I, I don't know a lot about donut economics, but I, I think that's a really nice framework to work with. Um, and then bringing social well-being metrics in that kind of thing as well. Would you be interested in going to the forum? Yeah, I would be interested. Uh, I was excited and then you said something about action items and I went, oh no. I'm no, sorry, <laughs> sorry. There, there's one set There's one set of uh, sessions where they're gonna call them action labs, I think. And okay. that no, would be where if you're, if you are, if it makes sense, right? To participate in some, it, it, okay. talk about some kind of thing where you can actually work on it when you get home, that makes sense. You're probably already doing it. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, no, I'm, I, I'm definitely interested for sure, yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, Mayor Leonard, have, oops, sorry. Sorry, I was going to say, I think I have a place to crash on Gabriel too, so. Oh, okay. Uh, go ahead, Mayor Leonard, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I love this, uh, this partnership. I'm, I'm a little bit familiar with the organization uh, as we did speak about it offline. I checked my calendar. I, I could attend the, um, the 26th if you would uh, be interested in having me out there for the day on April 26th. Well, that uh, would be wonderful. Possibly the evening of the 25th as well. Um, I think what I really um, appreciate in reading back through some of the minutes of this committee and some of the um, ideas and concepts that are beginning to frame what I'm seeing here, the the idea of starting to um, root our community in something like donut economics or being informed by uh, UN sustainable development goals, um, particularly as we're likely looking at an OCP um, update, revision, evolution, whatever we want to call it, I think is um, really salient. So to have some of our uh, committee members, particularly this committee, which, you know, working committee that's often out in the community, I think it's um, um, a really great time to be looking at that and doing it that and, and examining framework. So we did see Lori come in front of council on uh, Monday to speak about values-based ethical decision-making. We have donut economics on the table. We've had um, talk of UN sustainable development goals. So um, by all means, these are, these are things that can be sent upwards to council and fuel our, um, our discussions as, you know, we get into this sort of circular conversation between um, committee, community, uh, and council, um, and then out in the world at large. Is Lori, is Lori a Bowen person? She is not. Uh, she made a, um, a connection with Councillor Getty, I think. Um, so I can, I can connect with Councillor Getty on that and, and pull her in. Or if there's any information that you'd like, um, mm -hmm. we can look into that for you. Okay. I put the link in the chat to her um, presentation. Great, thank you. Um, okay, and does anybody have uh, any other ideas? Um, I think, uh, Jamie? Yeah, I think Vaughn, um, <clears throat> when you mentioned about maybe some committee members um, like housing, for instance, um, yeah. something from that committee maybe should yeah. 
Indeed. And Robin Fenton uh, attended the very first forum in 2019. She may be interested again, and I'm sure there's many others. Um, you know, particularly the subjects that are that are on the agenda for that that uh, session or that the, the thing, the forum. Mm -hmm. um, trying to find people from Bowen that sort of represent those areas. Yeah, and then I was trying to think about you know from the business side of it, like is there anything that you know, if you had like more of a showcase sort of set up where a business could present whatever it is that they do, knowing that, you know, there's all these other Islanders there that perhaps there might be things that they could um, do uh, as a group that would benefit them, i.e. shipping, like, like logistics and shipping kind of stuff that if they got together, there might be some savings or, you know, uh, some benefits there, or they might have a, a product or a service that they could sell to other islanders. I don't know. Something, you know, I'm trying to think of that because there, there's an opportunity to have different kinds of sessions here. And we've talked about even having like maybe a booth kind of, you know, session where people can actually show, you know, be present and talk to others um, and, and talk about their businesses. Nothing's coming like hugely to mind that's based on Bowen, but um, I don't know. I just think it's a great opportunity. And I guess the best way to do is just to frame it as an opportunity and get it out to the community as well as we can through the other, obviously the people who are on other committees are also very, you know, interested in, um, you know, they're, they're taking action, right? So and then the general community too, though, I think we need to do a, 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 a general call to say this, this conference is happening. Perhaps after um, this program meeting next week, I'll do just a little bit more back, you know, talking to people, I think before then, and then after that meeting, I'll put something together that we can get out to the community, make some decisions around how, yeah, does that sound good? It sounds good. There's not tons of information yet on the website. So once no, there's nothing, yeah. right? Yeah. Once we have some content, we can start um, energizing. Yeah. It. Yeah. Okay. So I'll uh, I'll be following up on that. Okay. Um, I guess Kirsten isn't here, so we're not doing the next item. And then we have. Plan element three, the local food sector. Okay, so that is something. Uh, there is a group on, on Bowen called Thrive that have been looking at uh, food resiliency and possible possibility of greenhouses, et cetera. Their report has now been finished and they have decided to go with a pilot project involving individual um, towers that you would actually just put in your home or an office or anywhere. Uh, just one tower, you know, in a room kind of thing. So um, as a possible way of starting to produce more food on Bowen, and they are working with um, one of the teachers at IPS about prototyping this with the students. So would have a tower at the school and build an educational uh, program around it. Currently also going for some additional funding to support that as well as work on uh, an app with Martin um, to address the, one of the things that came out on the report, I believe, was that they really need to understand the demand on the island. So Martin, you might want to say a little bit more about how that app would uh, basically mine that information if i understand if I, am i understanding that correctly uh yeah and uh again it's maybe app is uh not okay. uh, right like a, a better term would be um uh, demand analytics that's what it's trying to do uh to understand how much people are willing to pay extra for uh, local and what kind of constraints they would like to put on uh 
you know, what kind of products they would like to see, like produced in what, in, in which way. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's more of an information gathering backend system. Uh, it do, there is a website that, because I'm part of Thrive, uh, there is a website that we brought up uh, where we can uh, uh, do this type of demand sourcing and it kind of starts a conversation between the community who's interested in purchasing and between those who are interested in growing with the new methods as well as existing growers so it's it's sort of like a marketplace uh, but really the main point of it is the back-end uh, supply demand uh, map database okay um Maybe you could, could you put that link in the chat? Uh, the website is, yeah, I can put a link uh, that sort of does an auto login. It's hidden still because okay. it hasn't been released to, for oh, public okay. use, but I can okay. share, I can share the demo. With okay. The team. No okay. So at this point, I guess I'm thinking again, that's another group that would really benefit from being part of the forum. And so, yes. right, uh, I know that there are other islands doing things with greenhouses and there's a, I know, Levin, you've talked about seaweed before. There is an initiative right now underway with seaweed, a uh, co- combination <laughs> of seaweed and scallop farming, which I believe is going to be presented or, or somehow, you know, pre- presented at the, represented at the, at the forum. So I do think that's another group that should be present. Martin, you, David. I was hoping myself actually to get to the forum, so I, I will. I should be there. Good. And I'll talk to David. I'm not sure about him. Yeah. Well, I can talk to him too. Um, uh, full disclosure: David is the lead of Thrive, and he's also my husband. So <laughs> I kind of know if little bit about what he's doing. Not too much, though, because I have enough on my own plate. <laughs> okay. Um, and any other, and, you know, any, any other involvement by this committee in terms of that? I don't, I don't have a sense. There's no, there's no uh, ask right now from the group. Um, as far as I know. Not to this committee, no. No. Okay, let's move along. Uh, budget, <laughs> work plan and budget. So it's time to submit our, our budget request to the municipality. And Steph, you're gonna draw up a, a, a sorry, put up a, a. I will put up the budget that we hammered out. Um, uh, Vaughn and I met this afternoon to come up with some ideas for, um, uh, committee's consideration for the budget. It's similar request to last year, um, but we've added a tiny bit more that we would ask for. Um, one thing that's new is um, in light of a recent request for some funding support for initiative, the art crawl, and previous year's requests such as that, um, we are proposing to the committee that we develop a small grants program or a bursary program, wherein the committee can develop a criteria and application that can streamline those kinds of requests. Does anyone have any comments on that? Can you put up the budget, uh, Steph? Yeah, there So here we have the annual business summit, not this year, was what we're thinking. Speakers and delegations, 500. We did not do this last year, but with the enthusiasm for donut economy, we might want to keep a placeholder for that. I just, I'm and- going to give a little context to our new members. Um, the One of the activities that this committee has been doing over the past years um, and before COVID in person were, was a, a continuous outreach. So we would sometimes do it by sector and hold um, 
lunch or breakfast meetings with different sectors to get uh, information on, on where they were at, as well as what their needs might be. And then once a year, we were doing an annual economic development business summit, uh, usually at the lodge and with about 100 people in attendance and invite the entire community in. So just, just to have that reference, we haven't been doing that because of COVID and we're not going to do it this year. We'll likely put it on the books for next year to do an, uh, an island-wide one again. Um, go ahead, sorry, Steph. That's okay. I just, to be clear that Fawn and I are thinking not to do it this year. If anybody in the group yeah. is enthusiastic, but we normally do it in February. So it would be something we would talk about planning in the fall. It's a great event. We, we get keynote speakers, good food. The mayor Huge does energy. an introductory speech, even when he's not on the committee. <laughs> but we can talk about that part of maybe fall planning. If Is everyone okay with not doing that this year? Yes. Okay. I don't want to feel like Vaughn and I just hammered this out. Yeah. We're not getting full group <laughs> consultation. Okay. Um, yeah, and these business engagement events, I, I could probably even delete this, but just to, to acknowledge that this was something we were doing by sector, which is now going into the um, economic development plan, activating that plan, attaching those engagement events to the um, strategies identified in the plan. Okay, so then back to the small grants program. Sorry, Vaughn, for front loading that. I just did want to sort of, didn't want to blindside anyone with this idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's, 4,500 we've allocated for an ask for that. No one's hating it. No one's loving it. I'm super excited you, about this. Sir, okay, you, go. Can you explain a little bit more? Like, is this, like, well, we obviously have to um, determine the criteria, but what's the general sort of idea? Well, the idea is we sort of help where we can and it's ad hoc. And every time I bump into the section 125 of the community charter, I'm reassured we're not doing anything wrong. And every time I call an economic development officer from another community, I'm assured we're not doing anything wrong. But it's not a, it doesn't feel very professional. It doesn't feel like it's a good process. So I think developing a criteria and a process for coming to the committee for support would really empower us to, um, to, to, to be more supportive and, to, and maybe also let the community know that they can come to us for some kinds of support. Yeah, Does because we're sense? always we're always um, a little bit worried about this, you know, the restriction which she's talking about the the uh, that we w municipality can't be seen to be promoting a specific business, right? But we can certainly help, um, and Steph is sure this is this is a way to do it. Um, but I will say that we will develop criteria around um, the application process, and it will be informed by our strategic plan. So we will ask for a, a, a small work group of uh, volunteers to develop that. <laughs> Jamie, That's the plan. Yeah. Question uh, or comment? I have a couple, just a couple of questions. Is, as you said, you know, is, is this our mandate to give money or are there other, other veins of opportunities for small grant programs? I mean, is that what we do with, because I'm new, remember I'm new. Yeah, on the no, it's not our mandate. Um, it's just, uh, well, because you were asking for yeah money. But, yeah, but you know, I. It's not about me. It's about like what what are we doing? As, as so, this, for example, so you were so you were asking that we that we provide some funds to support the art walk, so these galleries would come together and to do an art walk. What an amazing initiative! Yeah. They need the money, so. Do we just, just grab a number and ask to sign a check or ask council if we can sign a check or do we have a process by which? Well, I think definitely a process is really important so that you're super transparent about what it is. Yeah. Um, but I but I ask the question, is this, this, is this part of what we do in this committee is to hand out grants or are there other better veins of money to give? I know... BIM has other 
Uh, the, some background, excellent question and good discussion. Um, we did do, not through this group, but through the Snug Cove Improvements Working Group, we did um, small grants, which were beautification type of grants for the Cove. Does anyone remember those? Yeah. Um, and they would like, you know, maybe $500 or $1,000 paint, paint your door red or a flower hanging baskets, a way to invigorate and beautify the Cove. Um, that was seen at the time when that group folded as an activity that would fit well within the Economic Development Committee's work. So when th this idea kind of resurfaced, there was that fit in okay. mind. And I and I do think that um, I hear <clears throat> what you're saying, um, Jamie. Uh, I do think there are times, though, like for instance, the art crawl. It's a it's a it's a it's a partnership between businesses and a nonprofit, and you know, um, which I think is especially significant. And it's also very much in line with our strategic plan and the and the and the essence of what kinds of things we want to support. It's very in line with very a Bowen, you know, the artistic uh, supporting the art the the artist community on Bowen, right? Um, so I think occasionally things come along and this just seems like a better way of being able to say, okay, we can actually help with something like that and make sure it happens. Great. Okay. What do um, other members, oh, sorry. Mayor, Mayor Leonard. Thank you, Chair. Um, my, I think it's great. I think it sounds like um, uh, a worthwhile initiative. The questions that I would have likely at the council table would be, um, how does this square with the existing community grants policy, which we have um, within the municipality? Uh, because I think the, um, the top of that policy says that it, uh, those grants improve the economic, environmental and social well-being for present and future generations. So there is some overlap there that I might wanna tease out. Um, and then particularly with the, uh, the grants committee as well, um so those would be my only i don't i don't know if they're concerns but just uh, uh questions at this yeah. point to make sure and that, there is um, there, sorry there's a grant program that we looked at last night with the environment group as well mm -hmm. um yeah so right. jody could you go to the community grants program for instance for the art crawl not jody sorry jamie sorry i thought you meant jody i wasn't yeah. anyway sorry um i haven't gone anywhere with a request for funding. Um, I know that somebody in this in this committee a few months ago said, hey, how about we support this? Um, yeah, I think we were looking at our budget at the time and what we had unspent and also unspent. The, yeah. The, yeah. there was a line item that was very similar and that kind of thing. And then it just didn't go anywhere. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't good, yeah. yeah. So no, I haven't looked elsewhere on... Um, hmm. I'm, again, okay. I'm not completely familiar with all the opportunities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So maybe the community grants, is that still going on right now? Yeah. It'll happen this spring. So maybe that is an, uh, uh, a venue for that, Jamie. Yeah. Uh, Martin, did you have a comment? Uh, yeah, I was uh, just wanted to say this could have more of a push dimension instead of pool, meaning instead of being a generic call where it's applicants who come in, uh, it, it could be something that we use to pursue the dimensions that the committee is concerned about, uh, mm -hmm. right? So let's say, for example, that one of our focuses would be uh, sustainability, a uh, perspective X, Y, Z, it could be something specific to that dimension that uh, this partly funds to engage somebody from the community on it. Right, okay. I think we do need to think about that a little bit more, but I'm gonna suggest we leave it in for this moment. Yeah. Um, I think maybe one of the criteria should be matching matching funds. So whoever's applying for the funding should have matching funds so that this small grants program is not gonna pay for the whole project. Mm -hmm. I think that that's important because then there's a little bit more, uh, 
the 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 person asking is going to try a little harder to find funding from elsewhere as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's um, let's uh, note to put that back. Everybody, think about that a little bit more. We put that back on the agenda for next time. Yeah, sounds like a lot. When do we thinking. have to submit our budget by? Uh, not. We could, probably could do take another month. I just like to knock it out at the beginning of the year, but um, right. okay. I think if this is worth considering, we can maybe take some time. Yeah. Well, Steph, you and I will for sure start a little working committee on this. <laughs> Have another conversation at least. I'm, I'm oh, happy definitely. to be a part of that, that working yeah. committee as well. Just to, uh, Oh, perfect. I, 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 I don't see anything. I don't see anything wrong with the, um, uh, the granting. I don't have any concern about the granting. It's just like, where's, you know, how do yeah. we navigate um, yeah. uh, as a granting organization where we're, how yeah. we're doing it, how we're taking in applications and how it squares with the rest of um, uh, our granting right. operations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's have a uh, conversation. So happy to be a part of that. Yeah. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Steph, you want to continue? Sure. And then we have, oh, another one, <laughs> Vaughn and Steph going out for lunch. We don't want to do this BC Guide to Arts and Culture anymore. Well, Is everyone okay with that? Did we actually I decide think, no? I think that publication only comes out every two years. Okay. Um, so that what was you, Vani? Well, I think we're going to have just have a look at our ad and decide whether um, it was impactful, you know, that type of thing. Okay, so we're going to have to pay this year anyway, so we're not even... Okay. Okay, by local campaign, I took it down by 500 because we only ever spend this much. Um, BC Economic Development Association membership 325 training and conferences that'll be folded into the rural island partnership. Rural island partnership membership and support. We've got 45 there, so that would be hopefully to get some people to Gabriola from the community and hopefully possibly in the community as well, if that works. So that says membership and support. So we- um, Change that to- The actual membership fee is not very much, right? I think it's 375. Let me just check that. Three hundred. Three hundred. Okay, so let's- can, yeah, but let's be clear about what this is. This is okay, so. uh, membership and um, forum attendance. Forum, forum, yeah, attendance. How do people feel? I'm so that that's. I think it's. We're supposed to have a meeting today with with this group, uh, which was postponed till next week, and they was going to be confirming fees and that type of thing. But I think they are going to be around three hundred dollars a person, a registration fee, and then of course, uh, you know, people have to uh, pay to travel there, plus um, probably stay there because it is at um, I forget the name of the resort, but it, it's a it's a retreat center. Right, so all accommodation is. I think most people will be staying there, and they'll, they're going to like source some Airbnbs. But let's just say it's got to be a hundred and something a night, you know, basically. So we might just offer uh, bursaries to people just to cover the regist registration fee, or we can, I guess, leave that open to make some decisions around if some we, you know, somebody um, wants to attend, but doesn't have the funds for the rest of it. That's why we came up with that amount, just wanting to make sure that we had a good um, represent, you know, Bowen representation there. Strategic planning session, I think with the partnership forum, um, not so much this year, no. Um, we also have the plan in place. So we didn't, in the past, we would really need to sort of roll our sleeves up and get an idea. But now that we have the plan, but more of a guideline to work on. So we didn't have anything for that. 
um, the plan engagement events, 1675 to um, activate the elements of the plan. We spent about a thousand last year, primarily on the digital economy work and the uh, plan workshop implementation action report. Well, the the remote working. Yeah, the remote working was in the digital economy. Right, okay. Action. Yeah. And then welcome neighborhood. Oh, what was it? Welcome neighbor? What am I, it's the newcomer's guide. Is that the new I think guide? it's called neighbor neighbor or something. I don't know. I'm gonna leave it like okay, we gotta check on that. So that update. Um, this has been sitting here for a few years now. But it sounds like Claudia might be interested in participating in this from what you said earlier. At least from neighborhood. Oh my god. <laughs> what? <Okay>. -E -I. <laughs> <laughs> Are we done yet? <laughs> Okay, so that's a little bit higher. Last year was 13. So you don't win if you don't play. Let's see what council says. Um, no, so I I, yeah, I mean. Do you want to, uh, well, just everyone, we're not ready to make a recommendation on this tonight. Um, do some more thinking on these proposals and recommend next meeting. Yeah. Is that what I'm hearing, Jody? I think so. Well, I, I think overall a fifteen thousand dollar budget is is very reasonable. If there's uh, I mean, if you want a resolution, um, I mean, as long as the budget can maybe switch, you know, things can move around a little bit during the year, and like maybe. Um, but I think overall a fifteen thousand but dollar budget seems really reasonable to me. Okay. Everyone okay with fifteen? Yes. Leaving, yes. Martin, yes. Yep. Okay. So, what I can do then is I can um, report that to the finance department so that they can put that in to the planning process and we can do a work plan and budget with a proper okay. recommendation next meeting. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. Um... Next on the agenda, Cape Roger Curtis proposed rezoning preliminary discussion. Mayor Leonard takes the floor. You're on mute, Mayor. There we go. It's the motto of the uh, this post pandemic world is you're on mute. Um, the just some context for where this referral came from. So this referral actually came uh, a couple of months ago. It was originally uh, resolved by council on November 28th, I think, uh, with the release of the closed uh, minutes and, and the progress of the Cape Roger Curtis uh, Park and Metro's proposal, Metro Vancouver's proposal so far. Um, since then, and particularly in the last couple of weeks, there's been a lot of action on this. So we've had um, the rezoning has actually been received by the municipality. Um, that's going to kick off a uh, uh, an official introduction of the rezoning on February 27th, followed by a first reading, which is slated um, uh, in front of council for April. So that said, this initial referral was really just to um, start getting our governance structure talking about Cape Roger Curtis, uh, the proposed park on Cape Roger Curtis, and camping and um, use on Bowen Island, and hopefully to get committees, uh, essentially giving committees the ability to begin talking about this project and what the impacts on our community are going to be. Um, so we made some referrals, both to the Community Economic Development Committee, the Parks, Trails and Greenways Committee, the Climate Action Committee, um, and... Uh, Transportation and, transportation, Tran yeah, transportation and recreation. Yeah, transportation and recreation. Yes. So there's going to be more formal, um, now that the rezoning's in, there's going to be more formal referrals being made to this committee and, and likely a couple of others as well, but um, some 
possible conversation starters because I realized uh, after this was referred to committee and, and, you know, that some of the referral here is a little bit vague. So the idea here is that there's no recommendation that's needed. It's just for you folks in this committee um, to begin talking about it. So, uh, you know, potential questions could be um, within the terms of reference of the Community Economic Development Committee, what does this committee need? in relation to considering the acceptability of a park uh, with camping on Bowen Island and being as specific as possible. Um, there might be a question of what aspects of this project are most important to this committee and are within the purview of the Community Economic Development Committee. Uh, perhaps could be an initial overarching SWOT analysis of strengths and weaknesses and opportunities and threats. Uh, questions of for the Community Economic Development Committee, you know, how would uh, uh, this committee like to be engaged by council? What would you be excited um, to be engaged by on the Cape Roger Curtis issue? Or in what ways, because this is a working committee, in what ways would the committee be excited to engage the community um, with in relation to the purview of our terms of reference uh, in the Cape Roger Curtis project? So really big and overarching questions, but, um, you know, really at this initial point before some of the more formal um, referrals come along just to open the floor to discussion and see uh, what some initial thoughts are and what you folks think um, and what we might want to do or what we might need out of this. Who's brave? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I mean, um, I, oh, sorry, go ahead, Levin. No, go, go, go. You first. Yeah. Um, I guess I'm wondering if, yeah, the whole initiative is affecting, uh, will affect the, um, The economic health of the of, of the island, you know, if we're if that's sort of the lens that we're putting it through. Um, I mean, there's so many issues around it, but uh, I don't know. I guess we really have to think about that. I think the SWAT exercise that was suggested, and others like we could do various strategic foresight exercises around this topic. Uh, to put the work of the committee in context of this project. Um, so I think that was a good direction. Sounds like we're gonna have lots of working group meetings <laughs> next month. <laughs> mm. No, it, but I, I think there's a big link to make with what we just shared about the framework. And um, my concern is what I see happen now since uh, Metro Van also announced uh, their communication one, two weeks ago. Uh, this is a perfect, could either be a perfect storm for good transformation or it could be a perfect source for war. And depending on who I meet in the in the pub or in some other places, uh, I think uh, I'm not envying Kranzel right now to step into the shoes of, of getting into that. What I see is if we could, this is the perfect opportunity to bring an integrated framework to the island also. And that's also what the whole Donut Economics is doing. And so I really believe it's not about an analysis only. It's going to be about how to connect all of these different opinions together to something that is bigger than all of these separate uh, parts of it. So I think also, Vaughn, due to what you brought up, it could be a real framework because the donut economics is not about economics. It's about integrating all of the values we have yeah. in our society <laughs> and put the boundaries around that. And I think the yeah. conflict of interest around the Cape is, is there. The huge potential is also there around the Cape. So, um, so my invitation would also be to council is, is how to look into a framework and how you're going to bring all of these things together, because otherwise it's going to be it's going to be at risk. So that's that's my concern, and it's it's such a precious opportunity to build something that is long term lasting to really go into a long term strategic planning. Um, so I would I would love us to step up also as a committee to bring in an economical engine that is looking differently to economics than only uh, a kind of uh, conflict model. Um, 
And that's hard work, but I want to raise my hand also to support in the best way possible there. It's going to be necessary. I think we need to combine forces at all levels to make this a good experience for the island and not a fighting one. And it's been a fighting one for 15 years, so uh, it's not an easy task. Well, I think the first mistake uh, Metro Van made was to announce it, you know, just with very little information. <laughs> just kind of say, this is, oh, great, this is what just happened. Woohoo! <laughs> Not a good idea. However, that's well, in hindsight. Just, Here's one thing I will say. Oh, uh, just because uh, Jamie's got to leave. Do you want to, uh, oh, Jamie, oh. do you want to, I'm sure that um, Councillor Jurgensen and Marylander would like to hear from you before you go on this topic? Oh, on this, um, no, I, no. <laughs> no comment. As, as is your right. Enjoy, <laughs> enjoy your meeting. I'm, okay. I'm an interested bystander. Thanks, Steph. Okay, anyway, I got to run, sorry. Okay, okay. thanks, thanks Jamie. Jamie. Okay, bye. Um, I think there is a one opportunity here I'd love to see, and that is um, that the Metro van, uh, I, th I think there could be a lot of leverage to get the, to get the electric passenger ferry coming into Seymour Bay because of this issue, right? Because there's going to be an incentive on them to sell this island on this park idea. And, you know, if they can do anything to move that along, that would be great, quite frankly. <laughs> However... So we are just basically agreeing now, though, that we will put some thought into that. And when would you like to have some comment or you will let us know, basically? There needs to, there's not any formal comment at this point. There will be mm -hmm. likely some um, specific uh, asks from council to this committee. Uh, what's interesting about this committee and, and one of the reasons I signed up for it is that um, because... <laughs> You're focusing on things like, or, you know, it's not your, it's weird now. We are focusing on, thing, on things like donut economics. We're focusing on the community aspect of community economic development. And we're looking at things holistically is that the types of discussions that are had here are a bit more holistic and a bit more wide reaching than simply bring more dollars into Bowen Island. Right. Um, and given, um, Given that, and given the asset portfolio of Metro Vancouver as they seek to develop Dorman Point, as uh, the Davies Orchard project gets underway, as we're looking at increased usage of Crippen Park, as we're looking at um, traffic patterns coming off the ferry, uh, and then ultimately this project at Cape Roger Curtis, um, for this committee, I think there's going to be some really interesting questions and really interesting discussion and ultimately recommendations that can come back to council on Metro Vancouver's projects on the island um, that are going to be really useful. And there's ways in which this committee can engage with the community, um, not with any particular outcome, but just being out there and, and taking things in and asking questions and, and deploying some of the wisdom around this table um, in providing advice to our new council. So that's ultimately kind of the conversation that I want to uh, prime here and so some of the container that I want to set um, and to let you know that um, council is very open uh, to being engaged with all of the committees, you know, because there's going to be a bit of a parallel, you know, information uptake uh, as the as Metro's projects unfold here. And um, if there's anything that we can do within this committee, uh, you know, either if it's kind of blue sky, big picture, or nitty gritty nuts and bolts, um, we're happy to hear it. Wonderful. Thank you. Does anybody else have any more comments at this point? Okay. Uh, let's move along. We're almost out of time. We have uh, our normal updates from the province, but unfortunately, Wendy is not able to join us this evening. And just so you know, uh, Councillor Jurgensen and Mayor Leonard, we get up, we get uh, 
we have a liaison with the provincial government who gives us information on funding opportunities and she normally attends our meetings. Um, Tourism Bowen Island, uh, Jody, do you have anything you wanna talk about? Um, yeah, sure. Um, we, Tourism Bowen Island um, has a grant and we are uh, in the midst of this Metro engagement, starting engagement for uh, a tourism plan. Um, it is uh, a responsible community-based plan. So we are starting uh, the survey will go, actually there'll be an article in the newspaper tomorrow and the survey will be live tomorrow. So there's a resident survey. We will be doing focus groups with stakeholders. There will be two community sessions and there will also be a visioning workshop. Uh, we've hired um, a team of consultants, very experienced sort of tourism consultants. And, um, and yeah, I mean, the project ideally would, when we applied for the grant was supposed to start last September. Um, but the way that the funding goes, we're now in this situation where we're kind of in the midst of Metro. And, and uh, so I'm hoping this will be maybe a complimentary engagement. Um, that's my hope. Um, yeah, so I will share, I can send, um, Steph, maybe you can suggest like, um, uh, I will be doing, I can send uh, links and maybe maybe as well, we can on the BIM communication, maybe there can be some, you know, awareness raising, helping to get that word out as well. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so yes, mm -hmm. interesting times right now. Um, but I'm hoping that, uh, you know, as we all know, there's a lot of un unanswered questions around the park, and I know a lot of residents have concerns, and there's so much really thoughtful dialogue going on right now. Um, and so I'm just hoping that we can broaden our, our tourism plan would be a 10 year plan. And it's very much we're asking the question, how do we balance tourism with community well being so. Um, yeah, that's just a very quick overview. If anybody has any questions. Yes. I just would like to comment. We've been wanting to get a tourism plan for years and I think it's exciting. It's finally happening. And I uh, would thank you for inviting me to join the steering committee, Jody. and she's doing a great job. So, and working really hard, so. Thank well, you. And, that, and thank you for being on the committee because you you bring um, so much experience and knowledge with it. So it's great having you there. Thank you. So fun. <laughs> a question just popped into my mind about the Cape. If there is going mm -hmm. to be a, a campground, do the fees, the camping fees go back to Metro, Metro Van exclusively or does Bowen uh, see any of that revenue? I will back that into a larger answer in that there's a lot of details about this project that we just don't have. Oh, okay. And the, encourage, the encouragement to Metro Vancouver so far has been get onto the island and start answering questions. Um, because okay. there, is a, there, is, there is a bit of a vacuum. But what I, I'll also say is that on the staff level, my engagement with Metro Vancouver staff at all levels from you know, down in the parks department and their engagement department all the way up to their CAO has been very willing to look at uh, options and what that looks like when the rubber meets the road. I'm not sure, but they seem to be open to um, all sorts of suggestions. And I think we'll get the first answers to those when they are here on the 27th. Great. Okay. So, Thank you. yeah, come go, go to the meeting, everybody. Yeah, February 27th. And I just received confirmation today that um, both the Metro Vancouver chair of the board and vice chair of the board will be here um, all day for that, for the site visit, as well as the committee of the whole, where, where we'll have that extensive public Q&A, um, as well as the council, the regular council meeting afterwards, where um, the rezoning gets introduced to council. 
So, sorry, just to clarify, um, when you say go to the meeting, do you mean virtually attend? Is that what we're talking about here? Uh, yes. So one of the challenges that we've had as well is that some of the some of these pieces seem to be moving fast, and as the municipality, we're reacting to some of these timelines as well. So the the February twenty seventh date was just set about a week and a half ago. Um, our staff is setting up the details of the site visit, the committee of the whole, and the regular council meeting. My anticipate the regular council meeting one hundred percent, you know, streamed worldwide to everybody who wants to uh, come and join in. The committee of the whole will likely need to be somewhere a bit larger. Um, so I'm not quite sure about some of those logistic details, but I would anticipate that it would be uh, online as well. Um, I know from setting up, trying to set up our engagement, and I think uh, Metro Vancouver Parks is having the same problem, which you may encounter as well, is that we don't have a space where you can put a couple hundred people easily you know, mm. the gym is booked, um, the library only takes 70 people, you know, it, it's, uh, it's, I think Metro Vancouver Parks is struggling a bit with that. Um, it was a little bit of difficulty. Mm. The lodge used to be a good venue for that. Not for hundreds, but for, you know, a hundred or, or 120 ish kind of thing. Actually, that's a good point. Um, Councillor Jurgensen, do you have any, are there potentially going to be um, events and conferences at the Lodge? I have no idea what's going on. Uh, do you mean for that time period? Uh, I'm just speaking generally. Um, as Vaughn said, like in the past, we used to, the Lodge used to be open, but I, I and I don't want to put you on the spot. I was just wondering. Yeah. If There's that... a certain amount of that I actually can't speak to because okay. I don't have all that information, okay. but I can't say that something for this Metro Parks engagement is likely possible. Okay. Mm. Great. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next we have uh, typically an update from council. So um, I don't know if you want to do that this time. Um, can I, I, I've, I've probably jumped in enough, so I'll let either staff or probably Councillor Jerkinson um, jump well, in we if do, they'd like to. We do have a staff uh, update as well. <laughs> but I just, and, and for um, Councillor Jerkinson and Mayor Leonard, I, in the information items, I'll troll through the council minutes and pull out um, bits that would be interesting for committees. So, and I'll tag them into the info items. So we have here the cidery and the temporary use permit and white sales positively fit in Hillcrest. Mm -hmm. They're there. So if you're ever doing an update, you can use those as a guide. <laughs> think Great. The... Okay. Okay, so that's all for now then. Oh, goodbye, Levin. Thank you. Well, be in touch. Thank you, Levin. <laughs> There's lots to do. <laughs> okay. Um, so essentially all we have left is the election, but we've lost some people now. Oh my God, right when we need quorum too. What do we have? One, two, three, four, five. Hold on. One, two, three, four, And also five, those steps we don't, we then we don't have the right. opportunity for people yeah. to stand for election. If they're not on the call. <laughs> okay, let's do it next time. I think we'll have to do it next time. Okay. I'll have to be the chair for one more time. <laughs> okay. okay, that was Wonderful. a great meeting. And thank you all for attending. And I think we will, oh, we were going to talk about the next meeting. So does Wednesday, well, no one's here anymore. Not yeah. no one, sorry, that's rude. Uh, Wednesday, April 5th at 5 p.m. We were going to suggest um, with a mind to doing some subcommittee work in the interim. For this group, was that a good day? Uh, Wednesday, April 5th. Yeah, that works for me. Yeah. Works, for, Same time. Uh, works for me. Okay. 
You two aren't generally my problem, though. <laughs> um, I I am open at that time. I'll just put a hold in my calendar. Okay. I'll send out a request on that with the, okay. with the minutes. Excellent. Wonderful. In that case, I think we can adjourn the meeting. Thank you okay. very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.